getting started with Microsoft Teams Toolkit and Blazor. Let's make that quick through PowerPoint. I'm Thomas Gölles. I'm head of modern workplace solutions at the company at Solvion in Graz. And as you see, I'm way too lazy to update my slides every time. That's why my colleague is also there. Um, just for the people watching on YouTube, if you want to reach me, there is my contact detail. Other than that, let's jump right into the topic. Um, this slide actually comes from Microsoft Teams team and shows you the capabilities in terms of platform and the options you have to extend, enrich, enhance the experiences of your end users. And those come in many flavors. As the old saying says, uh, yeah, many roads, if not all roads, lead to Rome. Um, today, we're going to focus on how to use web technologies to create a tap inside of Teams, and we're going to use Blazor. Um, as you see, a lot of options. I don't want to get into a discussion what is better because, as always, it depends. So short consultant show also from my side. Resources, everything you see uh, will be based on those links. I will post those links now in the chat and then we can go right into Visual Studio. Uh, if you want to follow along and download the stuff next to your call, no problem with that. Uh, where are we? Here we go. And so you have everything. Let's open up Visual Studio. Okay, you're going on that screen. Nope, you're going here. Um, I create a new project and I will select Microsoft Teams app here. And let me move that, let me let me move that window back over here. Yep. And I will create a new Microsoft Teams application. I will call that PNP demo. What number did I not use yet? Let's say 15. Nope. Backup is the one that is already working. 15 uh, and create the solution. Um, I'm using here an extension uh, that you can download in one of the links uh, from Microsoft, um, the Microsoft Teams Toolkit. Um, don't be confused. There are two versions of the toolkit. There's one for Microsoft uh, Visual Studio and one for Visual Studio Code. Uh, the one for Visual Studio Code focuses on, on developing with uh, React and TypeScript, and the one for Visual Studio focuses on Blazor, um, and both are referenced by yeah the, the, the users specifically as Microsoft Teams Toolkit. That's a little bit confusing, but you need to make a yeah, precise decision between the Visual Studio version or the Visual Studio Code version. Um, how to install the toolkit inside of Visual Studio, pretty easy, manage extensions, and then you can just search for it. I have it already installed. Here you see it. Uh, it's in preview. That's very important. It's not G8. It has some rough edges still, but it's already uh, yeah, leading into a, a very good direction from my point of view. But again, we could come to this in a, in a few minutes, some rough edges. And maybe if you're not 100% sure what happens behind the scene, I wouldn't suggest to use it in production. And of course, that's also what the team from Microsoft is saying. Don't use it uh, in production until it's G8. Um, the capabilities we get with that is that we can say here, project Teams FX and configure for SSO. I click here, praying to the demo gods, and down there you see registered application under my development tenant with this client ID identifier, tap endpoint, everything looks good. And now just press F5. I might need to log into the tenant again because I opened new, a new instance of Visual Studio. Let's see if the cookie worked. Nope. Need to copy some details. That's the fun if you realize that you can't use your normal developer tenant because it has already stuff we are not to show are not allowed to show yet so i need to use my other tenant and i realized that like yeah 15 minutes ago or something like that so apologies for the short delay while i'm using my authenticator to get a one-time password because also my developer tenant uses multi-factor so always secure Yep, okay. And with that, we are opening up, or the toolkit actually opens up Teams. Let's see if this authentication thing, and see the three dots down there a little bit, is it still working? 
let's just wait for a couple of seconds before we try it again. Because this is one of the, the quirks in the first time in a new solution, it sometimes isn't really working. Come on. Yep, now it's opening up. It will open up with an installation dialog. PNP Demo 15 was the uh, name of the solution uh, provided. I click on Add. And here we are in a couple of seconds with our running code inside of Teams. So what happened in the background is that the Teams Toolkit actually created a Teams manifest and uploaded the manifest definition to my developer tenant. How did it know about the connection and how does it know about what tenant to use? Actually, it's based on the accounts that you provided with Visual Studio. And for the moment being, the first time you install the toolkit, it will open up you know, the normal Microsoft 365 um, authentication dialog. You will enter your credentials and those credentials stick. The only way to change those credentials at the moment is to uninstall the toolkit and reinstall it again. So that's was what I needed to do to change between my two tenants for a couple of minutes ago. Um, what we have here now is a Blazor instance. Um, I can click on Authorize. We'll see the code in a couple of seconds. I need to consent to my new created uh, Azure Active Directory application because I created a real new application, and it also created an AAD application with the right permissions to use. I will consent on behalf of the organization just to make it easy for us now. And you see, it gets my picture. It gets my information. That's all running by just clicking F5 and jumping through uh, yeah, three or four loops of authentication. The code actually, uh, the structure is a regular Blazor project with some special things towards Teams. Um, if we have a look at the page, we will have as an index page, it's the index razor, but our tab actually is the tab razor. Uh, it's referenced over there by slash tab. And what you see here is actually the page from the demo, congratulations, my name. And here is the magic of Blazor. It's C sharp inside of HTML. Blazor, the word Blazor comes from browser and Razor, Razor being the uh, yeah, HTML view generating engine from the .NET team and browser um, because Blazor comes in two different ways. It comes in the way of WebAssembly that's the one that's generating all the bus around. Um, and that's why it's called browser or blazer, because WebAssembly basically runs only in your browser. There's no server side needed. Um, the Teams Toolkit works with the server side implementation um, for security reasons, because if you have a client secret and the client ID, uh, you should store it on a server and not in a WebAssembly, because the WebAssembly in the end of the day is a dynamic link library that is streamed down to the client. And we all know that there are people out there that can't or can't wait for inspecting your solutions for credentials. So don't do that. Use those approaches on the server side. Um, what we get from the toolkit is this pretty cool sample already. Um, I get uh, yeah my username and down there direct in the Razor page C sharp code and then instantiating a Teams FX. That's actually the magic with the toolkit that they create helper classes that allow us to use JavaScript uh, SDK from Teams within our Blazor Team solution without actually us needing to fill around with the JavaScript parts. Um, what we get is an example of how to start uh, the toolkit with initializing it, and then you get a graph client by just saying Teams FX, get graph service client, and then you can start implementing stuff. Um, let's try one more thing, and let's try to add a small count of my very own amount of uh, teams that I'm a member of. Uh, I will just open up my backup plan to just make that quickly. Um, we will add a representation in the HTML part to add over here an amount of uh, members of the team. Uh, we need an actual counter. Yep. 
they are here. And then you're just going down here and call the graph in a different way. Um, out of the time, I will just start by making here a breakpoint. Stop again and start the toolkit again or the application based on the toolkit. It will load up and the breakpoint will only hit when I press the button actually. It again wants you to install uh, your tab. And if I click on authorize now, you will see we hit the breakpoint. And that's really, really cool. Developing a local on your client machine, hitting a breakpoint here. And if I go now through, you will see, okay, it will get the photo stream, my profile, and only two minutes left, but this actually won't work. I will get an error here. You see here, exception for own Microsoft Graph Service exception, because what happened? Uh, okay, exception isn't outputted, but what really happened is that uh, our application was configured to use a certain scope to talk to the graph. And what I did here was, okay, I wanted to get a list of all my teams and this scope wasn't present to the uh, Active Directory application. So what I need to do is I need to open my list of applications in my Azure Active Directory, go to App Registrations. You see here my backup plans and the demo 15. And here with API permissions, I need to add a permission. Microsoft Graph delegated permissions is enough because we don't want to read the details of the team. We just want the number. Team, team read basic, add permission. Okay, granted. Go back to Visual Studio. Uh, let's see, 15. Stop again. Press play. Again, it takes some time still to do the whole cycle. So they're working on making that this F5 experience faster because if you start developing with it, you will get, okay, this takes 15 to 20 seconds and it starts getting boring pretty quickly. But let's see, authorize, let's jump through. There we are, my account is member of six teams. So in 12 minutes, this was the Microsoft Teams toolkit. You can start by, or we're working with Blazor, F5 experience, you get a graph client and happy developing against the Microsoft 365 graph. Awesome, thank you, Thomas, really great. Mm -hmm.